Okay, gang, you finally made it to Alkynes. The home stretch is in the distance. You didn't even flinch when stereochemistry reared its ugly head. You traversed alcohols with no problem. So, I have no fear at all that you guys will have no trouble with Alkynes. Okay, so this video is just, you know, a little intro. We're just going to ease on into it. But I think you're going to see all the fundamentals you built up with Alkynes. All we're doing is adding just another bond. So it's no big deal. Okay. So honestly, one of the hardest things with alkynes is actually drawing them. So remember, if we're just going to look at a two carbon alkyne, I'm going to draw it out you know, on the bond line, but we're really looking at this. Let's actually think about what we're looking at, right? If we want to assign hybridization to both of these carbons, we have two bonding areas, right? So we're looking at sp carbons. And remember, the geometry with being sp is being linear. Right? So these are 180 degree bond angles. So that makes sense, and I know you guys understand that completely, but sometimes your world almost crumbles when you have to draw a six carbon alkyne. Right? So maybe you want a six carbon alkyne with the, double, the triple bond between carbons two and three. So think about this. You can't do this. This is a big no-no. Big no-no. Right? Because think about it. The reason why we draw like this between sp3 carbons is because it actually reflects the bond angles we're dealing with, right? So, the way you actually have to, this is bad, do not do this. The way you actually have to draw alkynes is you almost have to plan ahead. So think about this. Sometimes I almost draw my triple bond. Okay? Maybe, so, you need to have the bonds coming off of it completely straight. Because this is linear, right? So one, two, three, four carbons, five, six. That is how you would draw a six carbon chain with the triple bond between carbons two and three. It's weird. I don't like it. It makes me squirm sometimes. But that's the, like, the rules we have to play by. I had to grade a final exam, and if there were a couple of naming questions where you were given the name and you had to draw the structure, and if you drew something like this, it was completely wrong because... Yes, you kind of deduce the structure, but this is, this is a lapse of understanding. You don't truly understand that this is two sp carbons. It's a linear structure around it. The bonds need to reflect 180 degrees. Okay, sorry. Don't want to be intense. I just want to make sure you guys don't lose points on anything. Okay, so make sure we draw our alkynes correctly. What else do I want to? Okay, let's throw it back a little bit to ask base stuff. Remember, sp carbons are acidic. This proton right here actually has a pKa value whoops, of around 25, which is pretty good in the grand scheme of things. Because remember, this is a logarithmic scale, and this is on the lower side of things. The reason being, right, let's say if we throw a strong base in here like NH2 minus, you would grab that H dump the electrons on the sp carbon. Remember, because of the fact that this carbon is sp, its orbital character right, is 50% s, 50% p. The more s character you have, the more of closer to the nucleus that orbital, it, orbital is, the orbital housing this lone pair. And what lives in the nucleus? Protons. And remember, that's a stabilizing electrostatic force. So just as a reminder, and it will come back. Alkynes, they're a little bit more nuclear, uh, sorry, acidic than the carbons we've been working with. And I want one more thing. Oh, okay. So we can draw them. We've remembered that uh, they're a little acidic. The last thing I want to show you guys in this video, before we get hot and heavy with a lot of, little bit more new chemistry, is just how to make them. Okay. So let's just say we started out with. Uh, just propene, just for fun, okay? So to throw it back to a video from the alkenes unit, okay, so we want, we have this two carbon alkene, and we wanna to get to this, we wanna to get to, you know, uh, a three carbon alkyne, right? So how do we kind of upgrade from this double bond to a triple bond, right? Well, it does, it, it goes back to everything we've known. We can uh, add degrees of unsaturation by doing elimination, right? 
single bond to double bond, we do E2. So to go from, uh, to get to a triple bond, we need to do a double E2. So here's how we kind of go about this. If you have a double bond, go ahead and, go ahead and do a halogenation from the alkene unit, right? Let's add two good leaving groups across this double bond. Stereochemistry doesn't matter here, so I'm not worried about this being an anti-addition, right? Okay, so now I have, you know, right, because we would halogenate across the double bond. So to actually get from here to here, what you need to do is just toss in a really good base and two equivalents of it, right? Because we need a base to do E2 here and a base to do E2 here. And the industry standard, like the reaction you do, is you throw in, I'll put it in a different color because it's that special, you throw in Na, NH2. Some people call this sodamid, or you can just call it by its street name, NaNH2. If you just, you know, if you want to put in excess, you want to write two equivalents, whatever, this will be a strong enough base to do elimination on for and uh, eliminate this bromine and eliminate that one as well to get you to your alkyne. So maybe we, uh, that's, that's the roadmap, do a double elimination. But just to give you the full picture, maybe someone asks you, okay, do this from, get to propine from propane. So you won't even bat an eyelid, or an eyelash, sorry, and you'll just go after it. What you'll do first is maybe you'll do BR2 light and heat because you know that will put a good leaving group on your most uh, substituted carbon because bromine is selective. Yeah, there we go. From there, you do a safe elimination. Maybe you throw in some LDA. And if you want to be fancy, a good solvent like DMF. That gets you to here. Okay, right? Then you would do what we talked about up here. Get two leaving groups across then do your double elimination. Okay? All right. So now that we know how to make alkynes, let's see all the fun things we can do with them. And trust me, there's all kinds of stuff.